I wanted to do a real special video for you when I hit 25,000 subscribers. And I really wanted to get a special guest in here for you. And as you can probably tell by my shirt, I wanted to get Snoop Dogg. So without further ado, let's bring in Snoop Dogg. What up, Vic? What's up, Snoop? Man, just chilling. I'm glad to be in your kiddo kitchen. Man, you look a little different than you do on all your videos and TV and stuff. You're a little stiff. You all right there? I need to unwind. Are you gonna stand there and hold that same pose the whole time? I'm all good my bizzle. Let's get to cooking, fool. Okay, I got you. So Snoop's here to promote his cookbook, From Crook to Cook. And there's a lot of awesome recipes in here. The problem is most of them are not keto. So I have taken the chicken and waffle recipe from this and ketoized it. I'll have to clean that up later. Anyway, today on Southern Keto, me and Snoop are making a keto version of his chicken and waffles. What you think about that, Snoop? We'll make him keto then, fool. That's what I thought. That's what I'm talking about. Let's do some keto chicken and waffles with Snoop Dogg right after this. So Snoop, are you excited about this chicken and waffle recipe? You know how I do. Well, I'm excited to have you here, but man, we gotta do something about this. They make low carb Corona. That's right. Why don't you bring low carb Corona? You know we're doing a keto video. Let's get cracking. Let me go get you something else. Hang on. How about a Dr. Zevi instead, Snoop? I don't wanna have to go to the store and get some low carb beer. That work? All right. That's good stuff. Now that's what I'm talking about right there. And you can even leave the lime in it if you want to. Man, get this lime away from me. You like that Dr. Zevia, Snoop? Hey, that's good stuff, I'm telling you. And it's got stevia in it instead of sugar, which is awesome. All right, me and Snoop are gonna get in the kitchen. I'll show you what you need to put together this keto chicken and waffles. I changed into my cooking shirt and now we're gonna make some keto maple syrup. I'm gonna put a link up above and in the description to the honey video, cause you're gonna make it the same way. And I'll put in the description of that video in the recipe, the tweaks you need to make to make the maple syrup. But you're gonna need water, you're gonna need some of this Magic Baker's Brown or your favorite brown sweetener. You're gonna need some xanthan gum. And I know at least one person's gonna be mad that I didn't show you how to make this whole thing, but hey, it was in Snoop's contract. I can't show you how. You have to see the other video. Or just use your favorite sugar-free syrup. You're also gonna need some cream of tartar for this. And instead of the honey extract, like I use in the keto honey, you're gonna use some maple extract. So if you're interested in this, make sure you go check out that honey video. There's some real specific instructions you need to follow to make sure that you don't mess it up. So this needs to be refrigerated for five or six hours and this chicken needs to be marinated for five or six hours. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna take about two pounds of these thin sliced chicken breasts because I'm feeding quite a few people. now. You don't have to get the thin slice if you don't want to. It just makes it a whole lot easier. If you get the regular chicken breast, you need to cut them in half first. And then we're gonna need some eggs. For this two pounds, I'm gonna use three eggs to marinate these in, cause these are gonna sit in the fridge for five or six hours too. And then for later use, don't marinate it in this, but you're gonna need some mozzarella cheese. Make sure you get this low moisture part skim because that's gonna make our breading for these chicken tenders along with some of these beautiful pork bread crumbs. Now, if you haven't tried this as a breading yet, you gotta do it. You're absolutely gonna love it. And then you're gonna also need one of my favorite kitchen tools, a gallon freezer bag. This is what we're gonna put the chicken in to marinate it up proper. The first thing we gotta do before we can put that chicken in the fridge to marinate is we gotta prep it. This is the point I should have broke out the old jacquard and jacquarded this thing. But I was so starstruck from Snoop Dogg being right over there, I completely forgot about it. So I ended up doing it later, but you wanna jacquard this first. And then just cut off all these little extra fatty pieces. You wanna trim this up nice because we're making chicken tenders to go with these beautiful keto chicken and waffles. So just trim it up as best you can, throw all that stuff away or you can use it in a chicken stock or you know whatever you want to use it for whatever floats your canoe so now that these are done i'm just going to cut it into small pieces just make it whatever size you want your chicken fingers to be
After that chicken's cut up the way you like it, we're just gonna prep the eggs. Now the only thing that's going in here are eggs. I'm not doing any salt, I'm not doing any pepper, or anything like this. The point of it is just to get all on and through that chicken. And if you want some extra calcium, you can go ahead and dump a shell in there too, but I wouldn't recommend it. But hey, it's your kitchen. I'm just gonna whisk these eggs up and get them nice and beaten up so they can get real well acquainted with this chicken over the next five, six hours or longer if you got a little bit more time. Now I'm gonna just take my plastic freezer bag, put that chicken right in there for the marination. Now you don't have to use a plastic bag if you don't want to. I mean, you can use a rubber boot if you want. The key is to make sure that the egg is completely covering that chicken. If not, use one more egg. Hey, that's what they're there for. My timer just went off saying that maple syrup's ready, so I'm gonna set this to the side for just a minute. So since that maple syrup is done, it ain't maple yet. I gotta take it off the heat and stir in that maple extract. That's what's gonna make that maple syrup. Make sure you go check out that video if you wanna make your own. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this into a glass jar because it's gonna sit and chill in the fridge for five, six hours. Now while that's doing that, let's get back to that chicken. I'm just gonna make sure that it's pretty much covered with the eggs. I'm gonna get all the air out of it that I can. I'm gonna seal it up and we're gonna go in the fridge with it. After I give it a proper spa treatment, you know how it loves to get a little back rub. <laughs> oh yeah. After you give it a little massage like that, just go ahead and put it in the fridge. It needs to hang out for at least five, six hours, just like the maple syrup, or as long as you can, until you just gotta eat. Now in the meantime, while all that stuff's in the fridge, we can go ahead and make these chaffles, because you can make them ahead of time and heat them up later. You're gonna need four eggs. We need two eggs and two egg whites. Then you're gonna need one cup of mozzarella cheese. Make sure you use this low moisture part skim. You do not want to get the fresh stuff. I'm just telling you, it ain't gonna work. Then you're gonna need some baking powder and you're only gonna need a teaspoon of it, but it is essential to make these things nice and fluffy, just the way you expect a waffle to be. Then we're gonna need some cream cheese. You need four tablespoons of cream cheese which is about an ounce or about an eighth of this one pack. Couldn't get two pack in this video with Snoop being in here, so there you go. Then we're gonna need some sweetener, either this Magic Baker's or your favorite keto sweetener. You're gonna need a half cup of it, which I think gives it the perfect sweetness for these keto waffle chaffles. And if you haven't learned anything else from me in our time together on this channel, make sure you demand beaver free vanilla, one teaspoon of that. Then four tablespoons of coconut flour are gonna go in there. This gives it the perfect consistency paired with the almond flour and the other ingredients. And you only need half a cup of the almond flour. If you don't wanna use this many ingredients, I'll put my other chaffle recipe up top or down in the description for you. So the first thing we gotta do, whether you're making these chaffles or the other ones, is you gotta shred your mozzarella cheese. Don't ever buy that pre-shredded stuff. Just shred it fresh. Not only is it gonna save you some time, but there's no ingredients in there that you don't want. You're gonna need one cup of this, so just measure it out till you get your cup. Now you gotta break out your blender, or whatever your favorite implement of destruction is for really blending up all these things. But in order to get the perfect texture, you gotta blend it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add my two whole eggs into the blender. I'll use my favorite little handy dandy chopper slash egg separator slash 15 other function tool to separate these egg yolks. I'm just gonna toss these, but you can always use them in something else if you want to. All you wanna save of this is the egg whites. And I'll put links to everything I use in this video and any of the others down in the description. So then in the egg whites go into the blender and the cream cheese and the mozzarella cheese. This is all gonna get blended up real proper to make the batter for these waffles. And I know this old blender's seen us better days, but this thing still works great, even if it's ugly, even if I've lost some pieces. So I'm just gonna use this, cover up the top, because I lost that little piece. I'm gonna pulse it up, and then I'm gonna blend it 
until I get a nice dough for these waffles. Now once that all comes together nice and liquidy like that, I'll go ahead and put in my almond flour and my sweetener, which I put in the same cup together because half and half equals one, at least in my math. And besides, the least amount of things to clean, the better. Then I'll throw in that coconut flour, baking powder, and the world's finest beaver-free vanilla extract. Now we're ready to finish up this batter. Now, if you like this video with or without Snoop Dogg, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell next to it. And anytime me and Snoop do a new video or I do one by myself, you'll know about it. And I know that's fun to watch, but make sure you take a break every once in a while and scrape those sides down. Trust me, once you taste this, you're gonna want every last drop of this in the batter. Now that this batter's ready, I gotta go find Snoop because he told me that he was gonna help me pour these chaffles and get them ready to go so we can eat. Snoop, where you at? Where'd you go? Man there. Snoop, what are you doing? Why are you on my table like that, sleeping? Man, leave me be, or I'm asleep. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. Man, what am I gonna do with this guy? I can't take him anywhere. Oh, that's oregano. Snoop, what are you doing? Man, come on, get back in the kitchen. Well, looks like I ain't getting any help tonight, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do these my own self. So the first thing that I gotta do is preheat my mini waffle maker. This is the one I use, although they've changed the design now, of course, but hey, it's been a good one, so I definitely recommend it. And it's the right size for these chaffles. Now after that's preheated, I'll go ahead and give it a little spray on the top and the bottom with some olive oil spray. I guess you could grease it with butter or something if you want to, but I feel like you're going to burn them fingers, but that's up to you. And then I got a quarter cup measuring cup here, and I'm just going to pour half of that into this waffle maker. That makes the perfect amount. Or if you got an eighth of a cup measuring cup, you could use that too. And this one's got a little light on it, so when the light turns off, it should be about red. You can always give it a check if you want. You can put it back down if it's not quite ready. But that is ready. Would you take a look at that? That is a proper chaffle waffle for some keto chicken and waffles. Now just take a little fork like this just to grab the corner of it to pull it up. You don't want to scratch that nine stick or anything. Then I take my plastic spatula and just put it right on a cooling rack like that where it's gonna live for just a little while. And now you get to watch me make the other 11 of them. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just gonna show you this one more. So just put it in like that. If it's about that full, you're gonna be perfect. Shut the lid down, we good to go. And after all these are done, would you take a look at these? Do they not look absolutely amazing? I don't know about you, but to me, that's gonna make the perfect keto chicken and waffles. And speaking of chicken, it's ready. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out of the fridge and we'll start cooking up some chicken to get these chicken and waffles ready to put together. So I'm just gonna make a real simple breading for these. Now the amounts you're gonna use are gonna vary based on how much chicken you have, but it's a one to one ratio of that Parmesan cheese to the pork rinds. I just make a little bit at a time because once you put the chicken in there, you can't reuse it. So I'll just put as much as I need in there to start with. I did a half cup of each, and then we'll go from there and see what happens. Break up all the big pieces of pork rinds, and you can even cut the cheese up a little smaller if you want. You could even blend this for a consistency that's a little more like flour, but hey, this works out just fine. Now I'm gonna dump all that chicken and all the egg into a different bowl. And of course I had to use my yellow mixing bowl for the pork rinds and the Parmesan. 
And I've got my air fryer basket over here. I'm gonna use my air fryer for this, but you definitely don't have to. You can cook it in the oven. You can pan fry it. You can do whatever way you like, but I just love this Typher air fryer. And so that's what I'm gonna do. And after looking at all that chicken, I decided I might need to go in with a little more Parmesan and pork rinds. So that's what I did. Give it a good mix and you can go in with some Slap Your Mama seasoning or whatever your favorite seasoning is. I just want a little bit of spice in there. So just season your breadcrumbs and your cheese, your breading if you will, with as much or as little spice as you like. Then take your chicken and make sure that you leave one hand dry and one hand wet and just put it in your breading and bread it up proper. Did you catch that? I just broke my own rule, but you know, I'm just starstruck with Snoop Dogg being around. So I'm just gonna bread each one of these and put them in my deep fryer basket or put them on a plate or a baking pan if you're gonna bake them or fry them. And tell me those don't look great. We fit all of them in this air fryer and they look absolutely perfect. Now granted, this air fryer is a little bit bigger than your average air fryer, but that's why I love it so. All I gotta do is turn it on. It's got a wing button right up there. This is what I'm gonna use for this. And I'm just gonna let it run for 14 minutes. I don't even preheat it. But if you're using your air fryer, or baking them in the oven, I'd recommend looking at them, flipping them after about six minutes. Whenever they start looking like this, it's time to flip them over to cook the other side. While the other side's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and prep everything to put these chicken and waffles together. I'll go ahead and get my keto maple syrup out, pour it in a little cup. Look how beautiful that stuff looks. I'm telling you, you need to make this yourself, but you can use your favorite keto syrup or sugar-free syrup if you have to. The reason I took a little break for that is I wanted to go ahead and make sure that these sat for just a minute because they're real vulnerable when they first come out. So let them sit for a minute or two, cool off just a little bit before you go messing with them so that breading doesn't come off. And then we'll just flip them back over to cook the other side and get it nice and golden brown also. And we're gonna be ready to do these chicken and waffles. So in we go for one more round. I want to get these perfectly golden, crispy, and delicious. Once they are, I'm just going to take out a couple of these chaffles. I had them in the oven at 170, just staying warm. And I'm just going to put a couple pieces, maybe three, maybe four pieces of this chicken right on top. Hey, you do however much you want. And this is how I like to finish them. All right, let's try these chicken and waffles. Oh man, oh, that's gonna be good. Get a little chicken in there. Oh, that's good. What do you think, Snoop? Oh man, that fool's asleep. You done ate all my chicken and waffles and fell out? Let me know when you get some more of them chicken and waffles ready. Now, if you like Snoop Dogg being in the video, make sure you hit the like button down there. And if you want a good Southern favorite to make after you make this one, watch this video right here. <laughs> 